Hey guys, so today I'm doing something purely out of curiosity. I'm gonna do a couple tests and just kind of see what happens. I don't know exactly what to expect, if anything, out of the results of this, but I was watching again one of the great lectures by Floyd Toole. If you aren't familiar with him, if you haven't read any of his books or seen his lectures, I'll put a link down below to the one in particular that I'm talking about, but seriously, familiarize yourself with his work. He's a lifelong audio pioneer. That's the best I can describe it. But at the end of this particular lecture, he said something that resonated with me, pun intended, and it was just a kind of quick off-the-cuff comment, but a little light bulb went off in my head because I hadn't realized it before to be true. And he was simply talking about placing a mic in a cinema to take a measurement too close to the back of the seat. I'm talking newer seats. I know the old ones came down to the middle of your back, right? And they were horribly uncomfortable. Well, modern ones have nice headrests, like a lot of the home theater seats that we have at home. And what happens if you place that mic too close to the headrest, you get an acoustic boundary layer. It's obvious to some of us, but not to others. I've seen a lot of people make the mistake of placing the measurement mic, whether it's Odyssey or y or as I'm doing now, Direct Live, too close to that, and what happens is you get a super early reflection. And the system doesn't know how to work around that. It, it has no idea where you're placing the mic. It has no idea you put it right up against something. And oftentimes you'll see systems give that false speakers out of polarity warning. That's usually what's causing it because it, it just doesn't know how to process that super early fast reflection that shouldn't be there, right? It thinks you've got a speaker switched around because it's reading that, that reflection sometimes as much as the primary. So what caught my attention is he said, of course, you know, place the microphone where it should be which should be, for those at home doing calibrations, right where the center of your head, right in between your ears is. And that's not at the back of your head. That's not where you're touching your seat. It's forward some, right? So you leave a, a normal gap there. And the system can at least better read that to EQ it. But what he said that kind of made me think was, your brain does not process that reflection. Your brain does not hear the back of the seat. He said you can stand up, you can sit down, and there's no difference to your brain when you're watching a movie that that seat back is there. And I never considered that before. It obviously shows up on measurements. I mean, it's, you know, you can have spikes and dips and nulls and all kinds of stuff. It's instant. It's, it's there in black and white, but you can't hear it. I thought, wow, that's really neat. And he very quickly went on to say, if the system then tries to EQ for those false readings because you placed the mic in the wrong spot, it screws up the sound and you can hear that. I don't know, never tried it. So let's try it. So I did a number of measurements. You saw it in a previous video. And this is how I do my primary. It's in the upright position. And this is where the primary, the first measurement point is right where the center of my head is when I'm actually sitting down in the seat. I do not lay my head back on the headrest. Uh, let me sit down in this one next to it and I'll show you. So right here, this is how I sit in the chair to listen to music, right? And I'm looking over here and I can see that I actually have the mic too far back. Should be obvious now. See, you can see it. So I need to move that forward to right there. That's where the center of my head is. Right in between my ears is where you want that tip of the mic. That's your correct primary measuring point. Now, in all my previous tests, whether it was upright or reclined, I would then move the mic to where my head would be. So in the reclined position, it would be down and back, you know, exactly where the center of my head would be, right? That's the normal way to do it. But what he's saying is you don't hear this boundary layer. Now, I know this is in the right correction, the right position for a correct reading. My only curiosity question is, is this still doing anything to the measured response? And I can quickly figure that out by maintaining the position of the mic, but we'll take the seat out of the equation. We'll put the seat down in a reclined position so it's no longer affecting the microphone as a boundary position. And now we'll take a reading. So we're effectively just taking a pure measurement reading, theoretically, according to him, 
This should sound exactly the same, whether that seat is there or not, but the system will now no longer be trying to EQ out anything that it happened to hear. So I'm going to do a measurement like this and a measurement just with the normal, normal position. I'm going to load both into two of my preset slots. And the beauty of this system is I can just A-B test between them while I'm playing something and see if anything changes. Now, because this type of boundary layer is only high frequency dependent, subs don't matter. I'm not doing anything multi-channel. I'm just going to do a quick stereo test. So I'm just going to do the two mains. They, they are full range towers. They go way down into the 20s. But all we're concerned about is the high frequency. So I'm just going to do a quick test both ways with just the mains. We'll see what the measurements look like because we can see that very quickly in Dirac. And then I'll do a, a listen test and just see what happens. Who knows? So the first thing I did is temporarily turn off all the speakers except my fronts and they're in full range large. And that then just gives us the left and right front speakers. And I went ahead and volume calibrated those. I'm doing tightly focused for the most correction. Just a quick tip when measuring with Dirac Live, it's important to think about your measurement space as a sphere. You're not measuring in a plane or even two planes. You want to get points up, down, left, right, front, back. Again, not going too close to the back of the seat, but you want a wide variety of points. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. And another quick tip, you also want the points at least a foot apart. So even when you're doing tightly focused in a single seat like this, at least 12 inches between each of your measurement points to make that sphere. Don't make a, a real closed thing. Do not measure the size of your head. You'll get very inaccurate results. Okay, so I've saved the project as something new. We're back to our normal starting position. Now we're gonna put the seat down keep the mic the same, take it out of the equation, and rerun. Found another bug in Dirac, or I don't know, maybe it's a correlation between the JBL. Anyway, I've got the SCP-55 and it has all the options for Dirac, including full bass optimization. But when you run a calibration here with just two speakers, no subwoofer enabled, it gives you a license error. It says that your license is invalid, but it's not. You turn back on the sub, and all of a sudden it works again. It should just gray it out. It shouldn't give you any kind of license error. So I've got the results here. I'm gonna throw screenshots up here for you guys to look at so you get a clear picture, but I'm just going back and forth here. These are the two groups. And I'll tell you what, I mean, there's a little bit of lower mid-range difference. Uh, extreme high end looks the same. Tiny bit of change in the base nulls but I'm just not seeing anything like dramatic. There's no huge standout peak coming or going or a null or anything like that. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of a tightening of the response between the left and the right with the seat down. I think I also just narrowed down another bug in Dirac when saving a filter and the system would usually lock up on the saving loop. And that was the only difference I've made here is I've got the microphone plugged in. Usually when I'm just playing with making filters, making changes, I don't have the mic plugged in. I'm just working from my laptop. It doesn't have to be here in the living room because I'm not taking any measurements. But a large percentage of the time when I'd export the filter without the mic, it would lock up. It hasn't done it once here during these tests with the mic in. That's the only change I've made. Well, like I said, I didn't know what to expect. Listen to a whole bunch of stuff, vocals, large symphonies, bass, Acoustics, jazz, drums, everything. Uh, can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> it may be that the test was just such a small change that it doesn't matter to your ears. It may be that after correction, they just sound the same. Both are plausible, but bottom line is no need to do anything special with measurement if that's what you're looking for. I just wanted to try it. I have to try things to know. And now maybe some of you know, but hey, feel free to try it yourself. No matter what kind of measurement system you have, you can do it. And it's just a matter of how easy it is to switch back and forth. You know, it's super easy just using my phone right here to tap one preset, tap the other preset, and it instantly changes. So I can hear if there's any change at all. And there isn't to my ears. So good news is I don't have to do new measurements. I'm still good. <laughs> That's it. Open ups, guys.
See you next time.